All right, so my name's Elliot Mayo. I don't know if you've ever met me before. Um, I'm going to take you guys down a trip down memory lane. It's going to be a really short trip because they actually the first two jokes that I ever heard and the two jokes that I hear the most, of course, my name being Elliot Mayo, are uh, one, a reference from E.T., Elliot. I don't know if you've ever heard that one before, but I've definitely heard it about a billion fucking times. And, uh, of course, my name being uh, one of the favorite condiments of America, mayonnaise. Uh, I hear a lot of hold the mayo jokes. Have you ever wanted to kill a joke? Just like kill it. Just like basically destroy it to the point where anybody who would ever want to make the joke again would just feel a sense of shame just to try to make it. Like if I had the funds, I would get the actual bike from E.T., the alien replica, everything. I would get a big ramp and I would ride the bike up the ramp and do a flip into a giant fucking jar of mayonnaise. Like a giant, like football field size jar of mayonnaise with a, just a bullhorn just going, Elliot! And everybody in the world would fucking see it. It would have to, it would be a mandatory viewing for everybody on earth. And everybody would just be like, oh, well, I guess I can't make that joke anymore. It's just, just, there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep up with that. But um, I can't do that. Jokes never die, but people do die. And that's why, you know, since it's October, I feel like, you know, and October is my favorite month personally, because me being myself, October is the one month that I can, you know, just be my normal, depressed, broken, husk of a fucking human being spirit just sitting in a public place with my head in my hands and everybody's just like, oh, well, uh, normally I wouldn't talk to that guy, but it's October, so he's just being festive. This is just, you know, he's just enjoying, he's just enjoying the, uh, the month. He's just enjoying Halloween and it's great. So, um, yeah, it's great. Um, I love it. I love October. I love Halloween. I love, you know, gothic culture. I just love it. I love to sulk. It's great. It is great to just sulk in just Halloween culture and just love every fucking second of it. But death, honestly, a lot of people think that death isn't funny. They're wrong. Death is a very natural part of life. It happens to everybody. Everybody's gonna die. Everybody in this room, we all share the common fact that we are all going to die one day. Me and an Olympic gold medalist are, might die at the same time. We might both get hit by a bus. And realistically, I will probably not get hit by the bus first because I'm not outside as much as the dude who exercises and, you know, does the things to be an Olympic gold medalist. So, I mean, really, I have a leg up in that, as far as that goes. Um, but, you know, you really can just do what you want. And when you realize that no matter what you're gonna do, you're going to die, the amount of fucks that you give in any situation go down to a very minimal level, if you think about it. I mean, maybe you're at like some crazy coke party and like somebody's mixing coke with special K and you're like, ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that, but you're gonna die, it doesn't matter. You might as well just do it. I mean, this is America anyway. And I'm not saying that you should do drugs. I'm not saying that at all, but I actually can't finish that sentence because that would actually be a lie. If I were to say anything after that that didn't encourage the fact that you should use drugs, then I would basically be a fucking liar. So, you know, and um, I like to think that once you die, like depending on your religious preference, um, everybody's got their own color of the religious rainbow. I personally have the uh, very optimistic view that when we die, there's nothing and your bones just turn into dust and you just rot in your coffin and there's nothing left. But you know, some people think you're gonna go to either heaven or hell or wherever you're gonna go. I like to think that dying and going to heaven and or, or, and or hell would be somewhat like, you know, kind of like a Disney ride. Because I mean, God, if you think about it, like God is a very Disney-esque character. If you read the Old Testament, he's very Disney-esque. He's very, he's very out there. He's very big and doing his things. And it would just be like, you know, getting on a ride or a roller coaster. I would assume that going to hell would be much more entertaining because of the downward slope. Because you're going downward, so I mean, it'd be a lot faster, it'd be a lot more fun. So ideally, what if I could 
do, what I would choose to do, would be to somehow go to heaven, and right when I get to the top, assuming it's the same roller coaster, which I mean, like, realistically, like, there's not really that much of a budget for the afterlife. I mean, they probably share the same, like, general contraption to make it to one way or the other. I would just commit some kind of mortal sin, so as soon as I got to the top, I could get the full extent of the ride down to hell. You know, like, imagine God was just some kind of asshole who just sat there and was just like, oh, man. Imagine if God was um, the person that Westboro Brouch's church, like, believes it is. Just a humanity-hating fucking asshole who just sits in his cloud office and all day. He's like, oh, God, just fucking uh, another state-approved gay marriage. Oh, this is fucking horrible. I can't do this. I can't stand this shit. Oh, man, he's got, like, Fred Phelps is dead now, which, I mean, honestly, I'm just gonna, that, that's great. That's awesome that he died. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just great. It's great that he's dead. I mean, a lot of people are happy when he's dead. I, I'm not gonna lie, I cracked a smile. I mean, fuck, like, you know, and he's just, he's prob probably God's secretary at this point. Him or Mary, you know, they switch off on days. Um, and he's just like, you know, God, right here. This guy right here, this is, he's not... He's not cut out for this. I would live a very moral life, you know, just, just for the sake of going on the ride at the end. Like, just, just live a, a really moral, great life, and at the end I would just be like, you know what? Uh, get right up to the top and be like, you know, uh, I really, gay people getting married, I don't, I don't really see the problem with it. And you're just like, blasphemer! Send me down all the way, and I would just go, get to go on the entire ride, and that would be fucking outstanding. That would be great. And like, let's be honest, like, if you've ever read, like, anything about the Bible of the Old Testament, let's be honest, like, everybody in here, if you even had, like, a moderately good time during your life, you're probably going to hell. Like, I mean, even if you've had, like, even kind of an alright time, like, it's, it's probably done for you. You're probably over. But, I don't know, you know, a lot of people... When, when most of us die, a, a small contingent of people will care, and that's cool, but a lot more people care when celebrities die. It's a big deal when celebrities die. Joan Rivers just died. Uh, rest in peace, she's one of the funniest people ever. Um, honestly, you know, the respect for the death thing, I don't really, I, I can't really hang with that. I can't really hang with that. I really don't understand. There's a big double standard with it, Especially with Joan Rivers, like, you know, Joan Rivers actually, her dying was supposed to be cremated, but the Environmental Protection Agency stood, they, they just came in and they were just like, listen, all right, like, Fukushima's enough, like, okay, we can't release that much plastic fumes in the atmosphere, it's just gonna hit the ozone in the gut, global warming's gonna fucking fast forward another five years, and she's gonna be like, oh, no, we can't do this at all. But on the plus side, the plastic recycling industry is at an all-time high, um, and every child should be able to get at least a medium-sized plastic toy for Christmas this year because of Joan Rivers. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Joan. Really appreciate that. But there's a real double standard because if you're an asshole and you die, even if you're famous, it's like when Hitler died, the problem was he wasn't anybody in a room, you know, somebody talking and maybe a party or something. Like, yeah, I, I realize it would be a really weird fucking party. They're like, just talking about the Holocaust and Hitler. Like, oh, this is such a horrible thing. Talking about this and somebody maybe cracks a joke. It's like, oh, hit, you know, Hitler probably had some kind of small dick problem and that's why he was such an asshole. And there would be somebody in the corner and be like, <coughs> Ah, uh, yes, um, please have respect for the dead and Hitler died a while ago and I really shouldn't be making jokes. Nobody would ever do that because the person in the corner would probably have a huge swastika tattoo on their face and a lifetime of bad decisions to go along with it. So, face I don't know about all that, man. I don't know about the face tat thing. <laughs> there, is, there is no starting on that. But, yeah, um, share a Coke. You guys all know about the share a Coke campaign. Can you imagine if somebody started putting dead people's names on the share a Coke campaign? Just imagine a bunch of fucking teenagers just drop a bunch of acid, like buy a 12 pack of Coke on their way home. They're sitting in there listening to Joy Division, zoning out. They fucking grab a Coke out of the 12 pack that says share a Coke with Ian Curtis. 
You better fucking hope that those ceilings are really low hanging and that there's no rope around or the fucking, <laughs> the news the next day is gonna be grim. It's gonna be fucking bad. And you know, you, you might get on an airplane or something, you get served a Coke, somebody picks up the Coke, the first one says share a Coke with Buddy Holly, and the second one says share a Coke with Aaliyah, all of a sudden you got people reaching for the fucking exits, just like, oh, shit, the Coke's fucking prophetic, it's fuck, we gotta get out of this fucking shit before it fucking goes crazy, it just loses their fucking minds. <laughs> Imagine, you know, there's like share a Coke with a buddy, share a Coke with a star, share a Coke with your soulmate. Imagine you're in any kind of public place whatsoever. You get a Coke and it says share a Coke with an asshole. You're at the mall or you're like at work or you're at something. Can you imagine what an extravagant fucking quest that would be? It's just like, oh, just looking around, you see like a dude with a Salt Life sticker on his car over there. And just fucking, just like, is, is he the one? Is he the one I'm supposed to get the coke? Fuck it. <laughs> Me personally, I would just look into a mirror and just drink it myself. And just fuck it. <laughs> it's like, this is what was supposed to happen. It all makes sense now. <laughs> um, but you know, things are strange. Um, I got a movie pitch. There's, you know, I had a movie pitch. Uh, I have a couple of movie pitches. I really have a lot. Uh, you know, you can't really account for taste or lack of taste, moreover, because none of my shit has flown yet, you know? I've sent a lot of stuff, but just nothing. Nothing yet. No bites. But, you know, it'll happen someday. Um, I, got a, I got a really good movie pitch, though. I got something great. And it's really, it's really Florida-centric, too. I feel like we could film it here, and it would be just great. It would be a, it would be a great R-rated movie, a dark... It's a kind of a biopic, but kind of not. And it's basically just picture like a pan out shot of a nice beach in like Key West or something like that. And you've got, a, you got Jimmy Buffett. All right. Jimmy Buffett's out there and he's just, you know, enjoying his daily fucking regimen of margaritas and cheeseburgers. Jimmy Buffett, if you don't know, is a musician who has literally made a decades long career out of making songs about cheeseburgers, boat drinks, fucking in between eating cheeseburgers and boat drinks, um, all of these things on either a beach or maybe in a motel or maybe on a yacht, I don't, I don't really know, but he's, he's got a lot of songs, he's done a lot of things, and he's got his own contingent of fans, they're called Parrot Heads, so I mean I think it really plays into it because, you know, this what it would be is instead of the Parrot Heads just being fans of the music, Parrot Heads would be members of Jimmy Buffett's cult. Jimmy Buffett would have a cult, and it'd be a cult based on drinking as many boat drinks and eating as many cheeseburgers as possible to find the lost fourth strain of diabetes. Now, this fourth strain of diabetes is not one that makes you sick. This is one that makes you immortal. It makes it so you don't need insulin, you don't have to worry about anything, you're just coated with a wall of sugary goodness at all times. And I would play myself as Jimmy Buffett's best friend, because, you know, I mean, I gotta make an entrance for myself, you know, like this is a, this just, being in Tampa just, you know, it's working out, but it's not that great. So, you know, I could, I could go with a movie career, that would be really nice. Um, so I would be his best friend, and be rolling around in his cult, and we'd get a good shot, Jimmy Buffett, uh, probably about like 60 minutes into this movie that, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I, I probably got maybe an hour and a half, and probably 60 minutes of it is filler. So, you know, about, you know, 60 minutes into it, he's on his deathbed, he's sitting there, he's sitting in the hospital, he's got like a tray of margaritas next to him. He's got like a, he's on his like tenth liver transplant at this point, and they got like just the box of like donated organs because he's rich, so you know he doesn't have to wait. And uh, also, just want to throw this out there in case Pixar is listening or watching, the idea of a movie of donated organs that talk and you know are alive, like you know, give it give it ten years. They haven't run out of like animals or wildlife yet. We give it another 10 years and a couple more movies, and I think they'll be at that point. 
So they're getting the last liver, and you know, this will be the cameo for that movie. So the livers will be animated by Pixar. I'll make sure that that happens. And one of them just going, they just like see the corner as they're being carried in. They see the Hawaiian shirt, the tray of margaritas, and he's just like, oh no, I'm not going on a kamikaze mission. This is done. Like, I'm rejecting myself. Like, this is over. And like, this rejects itself. So I'm on his deathbed, and Jimmy's just like, you know, he's mumbling in drunk talk pretty much. He's just like, can't really understand what the fuck he's saying. Like, Someone can only drink so many margaritas before everything just goes to shit. He's just like mumbling in my ear, I'm like mumbling now, I'm like, what are you, what are you saying, Jimmy? Just talk to me. Like, oh, you want me to do that? Okay, all right, okay. I'll do it for you. He passes away, he croaks. And it's a sad situation. They have a nice Viking funeral for him. They have a really exotic, like, you know, an exotic bird read his eulogy. It's a pretty short eulogy. I mean, it's just like, oh, Jimmy was a great man. Oh, he loved cheeseburgers. He loved, he loved margaritas. It was great. And um, when he goes ahead, he gets cremated. And they cremate him. And his dying wish is to be turned into salt. He just wants his ashes to be turned into salt so people can drink them uh, with the margaritas that they so enjoy. <laughs> So, you know, they got a good pan out shot. He has his good Viking funeral, like his casket's floating away. Obviously not with his body, because that's being cremated, but just, you know, like a character of his body, maybe a bunch of like island fruits like made up and like a visage of his, his, his corpse. <laughs> just, uh, floats away and you hear the, you know, do, 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 as he floats away and this, casket burns. Let's flash forward to about you know, like a week later, this salt has been made, everybody salts the rims of their classic margaritas, just about to enjoy them. Everybody sits around, every Jimmy Buffet fan. See, as I just said Buffet, that's the fat kid of me going out. Jimmy Buffet, sorry. Um, every Jimmy Buffet fan comes out, you know, enjoys a margarita. The second the salt touches their lips, they just go into a catatonic fucking alcohol poisoning shock, just like hallucinate. The amount of like blood alcohol volume in his ashes just like kills everybody instantly. They're all just foaming at the mouth. They're like, Jimmy, I'm coming home. Ah, I found your salt. Ah, just fucking, and it's over. And really the only reason I would ever make this movie is so I could have just the end, the end, the, not, not even the end, just, just the credits, the credits roll and everything's great, but mainly the preview. The preview is what really matters. It's really what matters about every movie in Hollywood, Hollywood nowadays, if you really think about it. Just have the preview roll and it's like, Jonestown doesn't have shit on Margaritaville. 2015, Jimmy Buffett comes to town. All right, well, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got, so thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks. <laughs>